Hi everyone and welcome to my review of Microsoft Train Simulator. This game is now 11 and a half years old. It was initially released in July 2001. I know that um, I incorrectly say that this game is 15 years old later on in this video but it's actually only 11 and a half years old. Okay so we're now at the main screen of the game and we'll just choose drive train and this is the menu where you get to select what uh, train line you drive on and what type of train now all the one, all the train lines are down here and includes your four default routes which are set in the um, USA and in uh, Europe and Japan but um, as I explained earlier the main reason why this game still exists um, and we're coming up to 15 years after it was first released is because of the content that has been created by other people and so we're just going to choose some of our local content here something in Australia like the Blue Mountains line um, which is out near where I live and we'll just um, start the game well, before we start, we better pick what type of train we're going to drive. Something that um, runs in the area. Uh, see if we can find something here. It's not always easy to navigate this particular menu for some reason. It's a bit slow, but all you can do is just click, because it doesn't seem to have a hold down and click. So we'll just click through all the number of trains until we find something that would run on that line this day. You can see all these trains I've got here do not come with the game. They're also user created and as with anything else they're mostly available for free download. And once again is why I never decided to want to scroll through. It's why their game sort of... Ah, you're not going too fast are you? Eh, where are we? Nah... Anyway... Uh, I think we're getting close. Uh, come on, now you won't scroll through. Okay, pick that one and take that up to four carriages, which is a variation. We're going to say, let's see, let's start somewhere like Penrith. And we're going to be heading out towards Lithgow in summer at 10 a.m. in clear weather. And we'll now start the game and see what happens. We should come up to this loading screen, which is also user created for the particular route we're going to be driving on. These kangaroos that are sitting by the rail line are certainly not something you would see. Now this is a new version of this line which had to be created um, because of earlier versions of this line we're going to be driving in got into trouble for copyright infringement. They actually placed certain trademarks within the route like um, McDonald's stores, Krispy Kreme stores and whatnot that are that you can see from the railway line but the copyright owners of the logos got a little bit upset at the author of the route uh, so that it had to be removed. Um, so this is a new version which I haven't actually played this new version before. Now I can see there's an error already in the here and that I, for the life of me I don't know why they've placed this level crossing theory out here in the middle of nowhere. It's a bit of road, a bit of level crossing and mountains on either side. That is stupid. Why that's there I don't know. That wasn't there in the earlier versions of the route. But hopefully the rest of it is okay. So let's just get into... See these are your basic train controls here and you can actually use the mouse to moves, your throttle, your brake handle, and you can see your air pressure gauges and whatnot through there, um, but I don't like it. Um, these take up too much screen real estate, and we've already got a problem with this game, that it's a, because the game is 15 years old, it doesn't have a um, a widescreen aspect. You're stuck with 4x3. All the ratios the game supports are 4x3. I can force my monitor to a widescreen but everything there else, everything then looks out of proportion. It looks like too fat. 
I just can't stand that. So I've got, I keep the proportion. Unfortunately, it means you have all this wasted screen space, and the screen's much smaller than what it should be. There's nothing we can do about that. Now, so what I do now is I press sh uh, Shift 1, and I get rid of the train controls. I know what the key commands are, and I really do not need to see um, those parts of the game, or those parts of the screen. So what we're going to do now, first of all, is we're going to uh, go for a drive and we'll engage what's known as the reverser, which is controls whether you go forward or backwards. We're going to release the brakes. Okay, and now we're going to put the throttle slightly forward and we should see that the train moves forward. Now the graphics are still very good for this game, for its time. Now hopefully that stupid level crossing gate thing there what oh my goodness, that is horrible. That is just horrible. I don't understand why there's a bit of road there with a with a boom gate against trains. That is just stupid. But let let's just keep an open mind and keep going. Hopefully that's just a little thing there to mark the very extremi extremity of the route. Anyway, we should be now... Whoa, my train has stopped. For some reason I've... Oh, okay, yes. Um, I'm going to have to try something here and put a bit of sound on. I don't really want to, but I've got to hear the alerter. What happened then is, as all trains, they have a, a, a vigilance system, which means that if the, drive, if the driver doesn't do anything for a set period of time, doesn't use any controls, it will sound an alarm. If the driver doesn't respond to that alarm, the train will stop, assuming that um, the driver has had a heart attack or something, or is now dead, and is not controlling the train, the train will stop automatically. Now, because I had the sound turned down, I could not hear the alarm, and I got caught by it. So I'll just see if we can get away with having the sound low, and it's not going to interfere with the recording. Anyway, off we go, and we should be now approaching the station of Penrith, Okay, so that's my vigilance, and I just press the acknowledge key there to show that I'm still alive. familiar with driving in the area, all those signals and things are not going to be very And um, you're going to find it very hard unless you do a lot of googling. Now that signal, there is an error. There should not be a single live signal at that point. That should be a double, so they've placed the wrong signal there. But once again, we'll just see how we go. I'm a little slightly disappointed at this route at the moment. Oh my goodness, they look like old Russian soldiers walking along the platform. Anyway, there's people there on the platform. We're just going to stop the train at the station. Now, what we're doing here is we're in a mode called Explore Route, which we can basically go anywhere. I can unrealistically from the train control signals and points. As you can see there, I'm changing the route there and the signal is changing. Normally, you wouldn't drive like this. You would need, you would create what's known as an activity that would then control everything for you. You'd start the artificial intelligence of the program, guide you around. I don't have any created for this route, it doesn't come with any, and you can create your own, but I just haven't had time to do that yet, and that's, that's one of the fun aspects of this game, is that you can control, you can set it all up the way you want, I could set up all the um, AI tra tra traffic, 
uh, the route, the signals, everything controlled. It's, it's involved. You do your own timetable for all other trains, and it's, it, it, that's a lot of fun to do it. It's time-consuming. I haven't had a chance to do it. I have done it with other routes in this game, um, but for the purposes of this, we won't be doing those right now. Anyway, here we are. This is Penrith Station. Some passengers. And now I can actually fly up. I can detach the... Hang on, I think I'll do that first. Uh, okay. And then I do that. And I can actually zoom around. Have a look at the area. It's... This, this setup here of Penrith Station is quite realistic. I am familiar with the area and I would say they've done a good job. Some of the buildings they've used are stock buildings that come in the game and they're not very realistic for the purposes of this, but um, the signal box there at the end, the, the, bus, the bus bays, the, and the yards, they're all very good. I'm impressed by that building, that red brick building up there, which is meant to be the Museum of Fire, and looks quite realistic. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, if I wanted to go to all the trouble and do this purposely, what I would do is I would set up an activity that would actually park trains on all those empty lines there and stuff, make it look more realistic. Um, I just haven't had time to set it all up. Now, these routes, they take years to complete. People that to sign these routes um, take up to two years or more to do them. Yes, let's go for a drive now. We'll release the brake. We'll, we'll drive out to Emu Plains, which is the next station down the line. Now, this route actually does take you for 200 kilometers out, sorry, for about 100 and, oh, I think it's about 150 kilometers south to Lithgow. We're just going to go about five or so kilometres out from Penrith to Emu Plains, which is the next station down the line. So as we're moving now, you can see the game's quite smooth. Some of the other routes that they've put a lot more detail really do tax my computer, and um, I get up to you know, a frame a second or something stupid, but um, I need a more powerful computer. Even for a game that's 15 years old, it just depends how much detail people put into the routes. So we're moving along now. I have a speed limit of 115 kilometers an hour. I'm traveling about 51. I don't want to go too fast. So I just want to enjoy the, the route. So we'll just throttle down. So we'll cross over Mulgoa Road. Oh, actually, Castle Ray Road at this point. And we should be approaching the bridge, the Victoria Bridge, over the mighty Nepean River. game than in any other game I've ever played. 
Um, I've probably spent, oh, I don't know, I've put 500 hours on this game. There's just no, to me this is just the perfect game, but anyway, because I like trains. Anyway, here we are as we approach Emu Plain Station. We'll try, try the brakes. Hopefully we'll come to a stand before the end of the platform. And we're at a stop. And we've arrived at Emu Plain Station. Once again, we can zoom out, have a look at our train. The area here around the Immune Plains is fairly accurate. Even the station building looks pretty good. Um, the industrial area there, the concrete and gravel works familiar with the area. I can actually turn the headlights on there on my train and I can do other new neat things here like if I zoom around like this to get a better view of this for, for my next demonstration. There we are, it's probably as good as we're going to get. I can actually lower the pantograph quite realistic there and put it back up again. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just um, set off now, we'll release the brakes. And start moving. So you get a few camera views of your train, and the train is also use of done content. And it's very accurately done to the type of train that runs on this line, the double-decker trains. and. This is called a V-Set and they're, um, they're the most comfortable train that we run in this in um, the network. And it's all done very well. As the train went past, you see that the light went from um, green to red as it would in real life. As the train now proceeds on its journey up to the Blue Mountains. There's a few camera views you can view and I've just had a wasn't listening to my inactivity alarm. I've just had a penalty brake application. So I've just got to waste a bit of time here now until I can get the train moving again. If I can get my train out of emergency braking. I've got the sound turned right down so I can't really hear especially from this view what the train is doing. Should be moving again shortly. And we're off. So that's the view of our train. Another view. That's a view of the train coming towards us. And I can actually get a passenger view there showing what the passenger inside the train would see. Okay. Trackside camera view.
Now we're going to do something interesting. I'm just going to put the throttle here at maximum and derail the train. And oh, the carnage. All the dead people. I see dead people. And the carriages are there bouncing all over the road and all over the cars. And, oh, it's bad. It's bad. Okay, you're not normally meant to do that, but I just thought I would show it. So yeah, that's um, Microsoft Train Simulator, the original. Hope you hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for watching.